today we will start examining the formation and the development of four states for uh, current different political systems. We will start with the US because you are uh, obviously more familiar with this system and we will apply those concepts that we have <coughs> mentioned in the previously in the previous lecture uh, state political system the institutions of the political system in order to see the four the three major varieties through four case studies the three major varieties of three major ways in which political systems and states uh, can be organized uh, today. I'm referring, of course, to modern representative democracies, right? So remember, a political system is the way in which institutions in the state are organized, the, the way in which power is distributed between them, and there are a few major typologies, right? So we will see, we will learn about these typologies and some key concepts and ways of functioning through these uh, case studies. We will start with the US and in order to understand where the modern state, the given modern state, the political system is now, we do have to see uh, how it got here, of course, because this is, uh, politics is history. Politics is what human beings do and the institutions they create uh, to organize their lives uh, together, right? But this happens in reality. This, this happens in reality and, and different decisions, different developments at different points in history shape the path in which uh, that political system, that state, will, uh, will continue to develop. <coughs> these are called these, some of these key moments that shape future development are called critical junctures. So let's start with the US. Well, obviously, the United States of America, um, its history uh, as a state is fairly recent. Uh, its history in terms of a territory populated by many people is very old. Um, before the European colonies got here, obviously there were native populations and on canvas you have a series of maps which will help you have a picture, the development, the growth and the establishment of the modern state of the US. Right, so this is a map of the various native peoples on the eastern seaboard before the arrival of the uh, colonies. And I'm going to go through these maps and talk a little bit about each to point out key, some uh, key moments. The next one, the next map shows the extent to which um, the country was uh, colonized uh, until the year 700. And that's all there is. That's all there is, right? So obviously, who, who, who colonized uh, uh, this, this huge uh, landmass? There were European powers, uh, France, uh, Spain, and of course Spain, there was a, it was a Spanish um, financed expedition that discovered the Americas, uh, Christopher Columbus, of course. But then the North American continent, it was Spanish in, uh, interests and French interests and also English interests. And they, as everywhere around the world, in Asia and Africa, uh, they vied for influence and for control, for resources, basically. And here in, in this map you have different, uh, some of the initial colonies and the way they discovered, so to speak, uh, the land. Now the key, the key thing here, of course, is that it was the British uh, colonists, the English colonists, who were actually most successful. Also, be also because the Spanish didn't really establish colonies, they established forts, so military units. Uh, they, they, don't, they can't subsist long because in order to create a lasting uh, colony, you need to have families and children and so on. But even the first uh, uh, English colonies were, uh, didn't last long. They were quickly decimated by, by enemies, by the natives, uh, by disease, by climate, uh, and so on. So it took a while. It took a while for, to have the first uh, just more solid uh, lasting establishments. And again, by 1700, this is all there is. Right? And this is a map of just that portion that was, uh, that was colonized and the individual English uh, colonies by 1700. This is up to 1800. And again, this competition between various powers will continue. But we are getting to 1800 and here certain things start to change.
Here are the colonies between 1763 uh, and 1776. Uh, and you see uh, different influences, different controls. This was Spanish. Uh, the Louisiana territory was, was French initially, uh, and then uh, uh, given to Spain. Um, then these are the actual colonies only, right? And there's some French interest here uh, as well. But this is, again, just uh, the coast. That's, that's all there is. Well, <coughs> this is up to 1776. I'm just going to go through the next uh, uh, to these maps, and then we will discuss what these what these things meant. And here are uh, after the actual establishment of the United States, you have the colonies by 1790. Well, who are now states, right? The, the meaning the regions of the new state. Uh, by 1790, and you still see that most uh, of the territory is not organized in a state. This should remind you of um, of our uh, discussion and overview of the, the maps, of, maps of the ancient worlds and those white spots. But it's the same thing. Why is it gray? Why is it white? Uh, even if it's assigned to a state, right? Because statehood itself was not established. There was no what set of institutions in solid control, exclusive control over the territory. That's what the modern state is. And these maps are very good to show you how this state, right, the, this idea of a centralized, of a coherent, centralized, unitary uh, control over uh, territory and membership with institutions, through institutions, how this was a slow and gradual process. And it wasn't, uh, you know, uh, destined to be this way. It was uh, gradual. By the time the United States was established, it was only the Eastern Seaboard. Right? 1850, you still, still we only have, uh, you know, a part of the continent. Again, it was not a destiny that this should have been this way. It was state building, uh, and uh, it just gives you a sense of of, of the ongoing process. Nineteen hundred, not that long ago, right? Nineteen hundred, uh, uh, Alaska was uh, an unorganized uh, uh, territory. Right? The, the purchase will come later. Uh, Hawaii uh, in 1900, 1898, and so on. Uh, New Mexico, Oklahoma territory. Again, these are just territories; they're not states uh, yet. You see, the the not regions of the state, right? Um, so you see the, 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 the gradual building up of the state, construction of the state. And what's interesting in the U.S. history is that the construction of statehood, meaning of the state of the U.S., right, uh, went together, was, was simultaneous at the beginning with, uh, in a to a degree, with the construction of nationhood. And this, of course, is the map of the U.S. in the year 2002 uh, with Alaska and Hawaii and of course there are still some territories that are not marked in in this uh, uh, in this map uh, Puerto Rico Guam and so on uh, <coughs> but this is the mainland right and some of the important other two states um, 50 states 50 regions rather right of this thing. so use these maps to, 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 to have a visual sense of how uh, the state, the modern state of the U.S. of A, was uh, constructed. And we will discuss it uh, in a second. <coughs> 